Hey everyone, welcome to day 11 of Trahackme's Advent of Cyber 2023. And first of all, I would like to say congratulations, because if you're here, it means that you've been putting effort into learning something new every day for the last 10 days. And today I want to help you keep that streak going on. So let's just hop on the computer and see what Trahackme has prepared for us. Before we even start with our test, I'd like you to, to get your setup ready. So what you're going to do is you're just going to press this green button right here on top of my head. And then what you'll get will be this VM with an IP address and the time that you have left to complete the task. Now, I trust that you already know how to do all of this, but if you want to access your machines, what you're going to do is click on this question mark right here and then you click on start attack box. That will take a little bit of time. So that's why I did it before starting recording. So you can see that here on this second tab, I have my target machine and on the third tab I have my attack machine my attack box so this is awesome now let's see what we have here now that we have our setup ready we can start with our task for today so first we have the story let's go Antarctic Raft's technology stack was very specialized. It was primarily focused on cutting-edge climate research rather than prioritizing robust cybersecurity measures. That's not good. <laughs> As the integration of the two infrastructure systems progresses, vulnerabilities begin to surface. While Antarctic Raft's team displays remarkable expertise, their small size means they need to emphasize cybersecurity awareness. Throughout the room, you'll see that some users have too many permissions. Oh boy, that's not good. <laughs> we addressed most of these instances in the previous audit, but is everything now sorted out from the perspective of the HR user? I don't know, let's see. And now we have our learn objectives for today. So first we have understanding Active Directory, introduction to Windows Hello for Business, prerequisites for exploiting generic right privilege, how the shadow credential attack works and how to exploit the vulnerability. Awesome. And now that we have our setup ready to go, we can skip all of this. So do I need to start an attack box today? Yes. Do I need to start a VM today? Also yes. And is there a split screen available? Also yes. By the way, if you want to use the split screen, and I know that I'm not using it, um, you can just go to the top of the page right here and click on this very big blue button right here on top of my head as well. Now let's go back. So yeah, there's no direct link available and there are no credentials to access any VM via RDP, VNC or SSH. All right. So if you follow all the instructions here, you'll be able to deploy the VM in the attack box. No problem. I just wanted to get that out of the way. So now we have our first text where we are going to learn a little bit about Active Directory, which gets me very excited because I love Active Directory or I mean, I love hacking Active Directory. <laughs> All right. So Active Directory is a system mainly used by businesses in Windows environments. It's a centralized authentication system. The domain controller, DC, is at the heart of AD and typically manages data storage, authentication and authorization within a domain. You can think of AD as a digital database containing objects like users, groups and computers, each with specific attributes and permissions. Ideally, it applies the principle of least privilege and uses a hierarchical approach to managing roles and giving authenticated users access to all known sensitive data throughout the system. For this reason, assigning permissions to users must be approached cautiously, as it can potentially compromise the entire Active Directory. We'll delve into this in the upcoming exploitation section. Alright, so now here we have a visual representation of what an Active Directory forest is. Now, I know that Trihackney didn't mention forests or child domains or parent domains here. There's no reason to overcomplicate this. And the idea is that those users and those machines will have different roles, they will have different permissions, and they can all interact with each other depending on the configurations you make. So let's just go down here and zoom this a little bit. Next, we have an introduction to Windows Hello for Business. If you think passwords are hard to remember, say hello to Windows Hello for Business. Microsoft introduced Windows Hello for Business as a modern and secure way to replace conventional password-based authentication. Instead of relying on traditional passwords, Windows Hello for Business utilizes cryptographic keys for user verification. Users on the Active Directory domain can access the ID using a pin or biometrics connected to a pair of cryptographic keys, public and private. Those keys help to prove the identity of the entity to which they belong. The MSDS key credential link is an attribute used by the domain controller to store the public key in Windows Hello for Business for enrolling a new user device, such as a computer. Now, this is what is most important here. In short, each user object in the Active Directory database will have its public key stored in this unique attribute, which is this attribute right there. Here's the process to store a new pair of certificates with Windows Hello for Business. So first, we have to generate the key pair with the public key and the private key. And this is done using the Trusted Platform module. So basically, the Trusted Platform module creates a public-private key pair for the user's account when they enroll. And it's crucial to remember that the private key never leaves the TPM and is never disclosed. Second, we have the certificate request. 
The client initiates a certificate request to receive a trustworthy certificate. This organization certificate issuing authority receives this request and provides a valid certificate. And then the attribute that we just mentioned before, MSDS Creek Credential Link, will be set. So here we have an image where we can see this attribute right here for the Tracy McGrady user. And you can see that the attribute is not set, which tells me that this specific user is not using Windows Hello for Business. Now, authentication process. First, we have the authorization. The domain controller decrypts the client's pre-authentication data using the raw public key stored in the MSDS key credential link attribute of the user's account. Then a certificate is generated by the domain controller and is sent back to the user so that the user can authenticate by using this certificate on the Active Directory domain. And here again, we have a visual representation of just that. We have the client which sends the pre-authentication data to the domain controller. A certificate is then generated and he can use it to authenticate himself. All right. So now please note that an attacker capable of overriding the MSDS key credential link of a specific vulnerable user can compromise it. And after all this introduction, we are going to start our task with enumeration. Let's see what we have to do. Now is our chance to shine and ensure no security misconfigurations are lurking in the shadows. So let's get started by dusting off our magnifying glasses or mouse pointers. Enumerating the Active Directory for the vulnerable permission is the first step to check if the current user has any write capabilities over another user on the Active Directory. To achieve this, you can use the PowerShell script PowerView with the following command, find interesting domain ACL. This functionality will list all the abusable privileges and then it's possible to filter for the current user HR. We are specifically looking for any write privilege since the goal is to overwrite the MSDS key credential link. From the vulnerable machine, launch PowerShell, which is pinned on your taskbar and enter the following commands. So let's just take a look at the commands first. The first command will be used for you to move to the desktop folder, all right? So we are using CD, which stands for change directory. Then we have our second command, which is just to bypass something called execution policy, which is something that Microsoft implemented to help their users uh, in hopes that they wouldn't execute something they didn't need or want. So yeah, it's not a defensive mechanism because you can just bypass it, but um, yeah, that's that. And then we are going to load our script into memory so then we can execute it. So let's do just that. So I'm just going to copy our commands, go to our second tab, which is our target or vulnerable machine, double click on PowerShell. Oh God, this is big. I hope you can see it. <laughs> Let's change it to the desktop. Then we are going to copy this to bypass the execution policy on PowerShell. And then we are going to load our script. Boom, there we go. Let's see what we have to do next. At this point, we can enumerate the privileges by running the following command. So we can run find interesting domain ACL dash resolve kits. So let me just copy and paste that. Let's see what we get. Oh, wow, that's a lot of information. We might need to use some kind of filter to make this a little bit easier to digest, right? So let's see. As you may see, this command will return all users' privileges. Since we are specifically looking oh, for the current user HR, we need to filter using... All right, so let me just copy this filter. And what we are going to do is we have our command. Then we can pipe and add our filter. And let's see what we get. Now, if this output is still a bit confusing for you, let's add another filter to make this much more easier to understand. So we go back and as you can see here, we are interested in the current user, the vulnerable user and the privilege assigned. And we can filter that out by running another filter. So let's do that. We are going to copy it. We are just pressing up on the keyboard here on the PowerShell session to have our previous command. We are going to pipe it and add our second filter and press enter. All right, so I just had to move our PowerShell window to make this a little bit more readable. But as you can see here, our HR user has generic write permissions on this Vent Sprinkles user, which means that in the future, we can overwrite that parameter we saw some moments ago with a certificate and we can use that to log in as the Vent Sprinkles user on the domain. So yeah, I think we'll be able to compromise this user. Now let's see what Rahakmi is telling us. So here you can see the command that we just launched and we have an example of its execution. And I can see that here the user it's different. Okay, so for us, the user is Van Sprinkles and here it's it was administrator, okay. 
and let's see the explanation. As you can see from the previous output, the user HR has generic write permission over the administrator object visible on the CN attribute. Okay, so this is just the example. Okay, later we can compromise the account with that privilege by updating the MSTS key credential link with a certificate. Again, that parameter that I was talking about, I just didn't remember the entire thing. <laughs> this vulnerability is known as the shadow credentials attack. Awesome, we just learned something new today. Now, the vulnerable user may not be the same as the administrator. Please note that down since you'll use it in the exploitation thing. Come on, try hack me. We are professional hackers here. We noticed that the user was not the same. Come on, you don't need to tell us everything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, sometimes those are the things that you just miss and for some reason the attack doesn't work because you're trying to follow the walkthrough or the example. You always have to check for the users, the IP address, if you're using the correct information for your specific example. And that goes for all the TriHackMe challenges, rooms and tasks. So yeah, thank you for that TriHackMe. <laughs> Okay, so now we have exploitation, which means that we are approaching the fun part. So let's just read through this. One helpful tool for abusing the vulnerable privilege is Whisker, a C-sharp utility created by Elad Shamir. Using Whisker is straightforward. Once we have a vulnerable user, we can run the add command from Whisker to simulate the enrollment of a malicious device, updating the MSDS key credential link attribute. All right. This task can be accomplished by running the following command. So we have the tool and we will add our target. Again, make sure you update this for the right vulnerable user, which in our case will be defense sprinkles. All right, so let's just do that. Let me copy this command here without the administrator user. And I'm just going to add our vent sprinkles. So let me just hit enter on that. All right, we just got a huge output on this. So let me just scroll up to show you this. You can run Rubius with the following syntax. So they are giving us a command with some instructions and we can see that we have our user here. We just got a certificate and there's this instruction here that means ask for a ticket. So this is what we are going to use moving forward. We also have a password. We have our domain and get credentials and show. These are also other instructions to use with Rubius. So that's the tool that we are going to use next in our exploitation phase. So the tool will conveniently provide the certificate necessary to authenticate the impersonation of the vulnerable user with a command ready to be launched using Rubius. This is so nice. The core idea behind the authentication in Active Directory is using the Kerberos protocol, which provides tokens, the TGT, ticket grant ticket, which is what this means, for each user, a ticket grant ticket can be seen as a session token that avoids the credential prompt after user authentication. Rubius, a C-sharp toolset designed for direct Kerberos interaction and exploitation, was developed by Spectre Ops, a past hash attack. You can continue the exploitation by asking for a ticket of the vulnerable user using the certificate generated in the previous command. Once you're obtained the certificate, you can acquire a valid ticket and impersonate the vulnerable user. Additionally, the NTLM hash of the user account can be displayed in the console output, which can be used for a pass the hash attack. Awesome. So a pass the hash attack is when you're using the hash instead of a password to authenticate as the user. So, so that's what we are going to do in just a couple moments. You can continue the exploitation by asking for a ticket grant ticket of the vulnerable user using the certificate generated in the previous command. To do so, copy and paste the output from the previous command and a detailed explanation of what that command is doing can be seen below. Now, this is very important. If you're a beginner and you see like this huge output on a, on a terminal, you'll be like, okay, what the heck is this? <laughs> but here you have all the explanation you need. So if you're going to run Rubius, you'll have these different instructions. So first we have this here, ask ticket grant ticket. This will make a request to obtain a ticket. Then we have the user, which is the user we want to impersonate. So our target user, which is our event sprinkles. Then the certificate that we just generated to impersonate the user, the password, which is the password using for decoding the certificate since it's encrypted. The domain, it's our target domain. And then we have the get credentials. And here to hack me refers to this as a flag. And when you're using a command and then you provide the instructions, you can also refer to it as flag. So yeah, this flag will retrieve the NTLM hash, which will be used in the next step. And then finally we have slash DC, the domain controller that will generate the ticket. All right, so let's just do that. Let me just copy all of this output here with our certificate and all the instructions or flags, whatever you want to call them. And then we are going to copy it and make sure you are on your desktop folder because let me just move this a little bit. You can see that our Rubius tool is here on the desktop folder on the Windows 10 client. So I can see that we are on the desktop 
okay then we copy and paste it but before we execute it let me just go to the top by clicking on home and adding this dot slash to execute the file and there we go it's executing all right, so as you can see here, we have our NTLM hash for the user Van Sprinkles, which we are going to use now for the pasta hash attack. Exactly. You can now execute a pasta hash attack using the NTLM hash obtained from the previous command. All right. This attack involves leveraging the encrypted password stored in the domain controller rather than relying on the plain text password. To do this, you can use the Evil WinRM, a tool for remotely managing Windows systems, abusing the Windows Remote Management Protocol. So this is the command that we are going to use. And again, make sure you check all the parameters. So here we have Evil WinRM, which is the tool. And then we have to provide an IP address. And this is going to be our IP address from our target machine, which is 1010.31.48. Then the user it is not going to be the administrator. Remember, our target user is going to be Van Sprinkles. And then for the NTLM hash, we are going to use this hash right here that we just got from our Rubius execution. So yeah, this is just the explanation of what I just said, I think. <laughs> and yeah, let me just copy the command and change all the parameters. So let me copy this. Now we are going to use our attack box and let me just open a terminal. And so if I copy this right here, our IP is correct. Now the user is not correct. So we have to edit that. So van sprinkles. And now for the ash, let me go back and copy this and add it right here on the last part of the command. And now let's just press enter. Wow, and it looks like we got a shell. This is amazing. Let's see what we have next. Okay, so we have the execution of the same attack. Now conclusion. We have stumbled upon a misconfiguration after all. In this scenario, an attacker could gain full access to our Active Directory, posing a severe threat to the entire Antarcticraft security system. As for our recommendations, we'll emphasize cybersecurity's golden rule, the principle of least privilege. By strictly adhering to this principle, we can limit access to only what's necessary for each user or system, significantly reducing the risk of such a devastating compromise. In the chilly world of cybersecurity, less is often more. Okay, now it's finally time for us to check the question questions and see what we need. So what is the hash of the vulnerable user? So we can just copy our NTLM hash right here and paste it and click on submit. Awesome. Now, what is the content of flag.txt on the administrator desktop? Now, our shell is on the Van Sprinkles user, but can we access other users? Let's try that. So I'm just going to move back two directories. Now that we are in the users folder, I'm going to type the ls to list all the things that we have here. And as you can see, we have the administrator user right there as well. So let's change our directory by typing cd and administrator. Let's go there. And now we are going to type ls once again to list all the things over there. Now we can type cd again to go to the desktop. As you can see right here, we press enter. And now we are going to type ls again to list and you can see that we have our flag. So let's use type to see what we have here. And there's our flag right there. So let me just copy it and put it in our answer. There we go. Now, if you enjoyed this task, feel free to check out the compromising Active Directory module. All right, press this as completed. And for the last question, Van Sprinkles left some stuff around the DC. It's like a secret message waiting to be unraveled. And since there's not anything to add right here, I'm assuming this could be something related to the side quests. So I'm just going to press complete. And there we go. We just finished our task for today. So yeah, that was it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and make sure you stay ready for tomorrow's challenge. As for me, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.